Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm not too sure if my voice projects as much as Shane's, so apologies in advance. Um, but Shane's always been the loudest person at SEQ campus, right? Even if we were on the mic, never needed one. Thank you very, very much for all making the um, journey to uh, SEQ campus here and spending the evening with us. And hopefully it's like it's the start of many of these to come and hopefully they'll just get bigger and bigger. Uh, we think that it's um, in the future, they're gonna get, you know, it's like it's, it's a lot more personable than visiting us at a show. And it gives us a bit more time to so like in our own environment, introduce you to what we're doing uh, without having so like a whole lot of little tin pot tyrants telling us what we can and can't do. So um, welcome everybody. Everybody's obviously very familiar with who Kimberley campers are. Um, my name's uh, James. I've uh, been running Kimberley Campers for the last five years um, and probably sort of like the hardest five years in, in my life. Um, we're now at a stage so like the brand is about, what I'll do is I'll give you a bit of a, a, a background on where we're at right now. Um, so the brand's just got to its 30 year, uh, 30 year anniversary. And in fact, yesterday at the factory, we were really, really proud um, to welcome the, um, the founder of Kimberley Campers from 1993. Um, Ian Cannon was at the factory signing three signature campers that we're building at the moment. So um, it's been absolutely awesome. He was there, um, you know, and this 30 year journey that the brand's been on. Um, over the years, we were able to culminate in, so like, um, in, in some of the products that we're building. What I'll do is I'll give you a bit of a background as to so like, um, where the brand is and the, and the company is at the moment um, and, and where we go in the future. Shane and Maud were qu kind enough to invite me up here. Um, I do actually still live on the coast. Um, I commute down to Ballina every week and, and back every weekend. Um, so it, it, it wasn't hard to convince me to come up here this, this evening. Um, but yeah, give you a bit of an insight into so like, um, probably so like uh, in some of the products that we're dealing with at the moment, um, uh, some of the technologies we're working with um, it, as a brand as a whole, um, a little bit of where we see the market going over the next few years. Kimberley Campus, so, like, um, so we've got a full range of what we, what we do here, um, apart from obviously the cruise wagon. Um, I apologize profusely. Um, we had right up until Friday last week, a cruise wagon that we were gonna have on display here um, tonight. Um, that's sort of like um, our latest release, which was in April this year. Um, that's now sort of like uh, taken to the market. And we're really, really proud to say as a brand um, that it's taken off better than what we even thought it would be. So um, we released it in April, a soft launch and we've got over a 12 month order book ahead of us already. Um, and that's growing on a, on a weekly basis. Um, so anybody wanna get their cruise wagon in, in 2025, get your order in now. Um, but it's, it is so like, it's uh, for us as a, as a, as a brand, um, we've teamed up with Mercedes um, because that's in keeping with what we're trying to do and, and where we're trying to portray ourselves as a product and, and for the investment that our customers are making. And, um, and our issue is just getting hold of the vehicles. So there's a worldwide shortage of Mercedes in general, and there's an even bigger shortage in these four-wheel drive um, Sprinter vans. So um, we apologize to anybody that's got an order in, in, in the system at the moment um, for any of the delays that we're experiencing. We did actually order them 18 months ago, and they've just been pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. So I, I think Australia is sort of, from what I can be read between the lines, Australia is one of the, um, you know, the poor cousins. So we, we get whatever's left over in the production line um, to service our side here. But um, we've got over 40 units on, on order um, over the next 12 months. Um, so the cruise wagon has been a huge success for the brand. And, and it's like it's um, the, the reasoning behind um, us introducing the cruise wagon was to actually sort of like, um, you know, for, for our specific demographic um, was to try and keep people in the brand longer. So where customers have sort of like got to the end of sort of like, okay, well, we don't want to tow or we have certain needs or whether that be health or travel or storage. Um, and um, and we, we, we now didn't want to tow. Um, we wanted to move into another product. So we've always been very, very good at keeping our customers for the long uh, for the length of their camping life cycle. So typically from so like the Kimberley camper to the Kimberley caravan, to the Kimberley cruiser, and now to the Kimberley uh, cruise wagon. So just as a bit of a teaser for, um, for you guys today is um, we did have the founder of Kimberley campers at the factory uh, yesterday, and potentially we're building the last three canvas camper trailers that we'll ever build. 
So our sales have just dropped off from there. The resources needed to service that market have, have, um, uh, from a business perspective are not there. Um, so probably what we'll be doing is we'll be building the last three campers um, that we will build um, for, the, for the Australian market. However, since 2020, we have been working on a, a Project X, um, so we'll be proud a little bit later on and earlier than we'd planned, so probably in March, April next year, we'll be releasing the Kimberley Cube. So it's not the roof tent, but it's um, our version of a teardrop camper. So it is so like um, it is a natural progression, um, probably the benefit of going from the, um, from the camper. Uh, we'll now have the Cube available, which will be similar to our Kimberley Caravan, but it doesn't pop up. And then we see so like our customer base going from the Kimberley Cube into the Kimberley Caravan, Kimberley Caravan to the cruise and then to the cruise wagon. So once again, so like covering off um, the, the entire life cycle of our, our customer base. So that's a little bit on the, on the product itself. Um, everybody's aware uh, from what, what I've been uh, you know, in the market that we've now so like um, uh, one of the first manufacturers, probably the first manufacturer in Australia to move to 100% 48 volt power systems. So all of our power systems in, um, in all of our units are 48 volts. Uh, we've been using that now for about um, 18 months. Um, we tested it for about six months and, um, and we're now so like at the point whereby absolutely everything we're building is 48 volt. Uh, the systems are stable. Any issues that we've had, we've just uh, worked through uh, firmware upgrades, um, which has been really, really good from our side. And, um, and the efficiency of the systems now, the ease of use, the ease of us building them um, has just been blown out the park. So the 48 volt systems are here to stay. And, um, and so like we're, we're really, really happy with what we've been doing. Um, uh, you know, it's like we, we worked through the early days with some of our customers, um, just with some of the software issues, but we're really pleased to say that. So like all of those were just taken care of with log onto the internet, run an update, all the problems fixed. And I think that's what we're going to see in the future is uh, absolutely everything that we do, um, we can, a bit like a Tesla, right? We can enhance, we can improve performance, we can optimize performance, we can monitor issues, uh, we can do help uh, on the road just by access to the internet. So over this last travel season, um, it's been really, really good that all we've had to do is so like it's um, to all of our customers, just log the, log the system onto the internet and then we take a look on our phones, right? And anywhere that we are, we can see what the customer's doing, what they have done, what they haven't done, read the error log, run a uh, systems diagnosis, run an update and fix whatever issue they've had. So it's, um, that's the future of what we're doing. Um, we've also had a, a big move in the brand to um, going green. Uh, so we invested heavily um, in uh, some equipment, which is just all of our own uh, panels that we're using. So all of the panels that you see on these units here now are, um, they're all 100% recycled plastic bottles. Um, so the floor, the roof, the walls um, is all recycled bottles. The doors, these doors here are all recycled bottles. Uh, the insulation is absolutely fantastic. The thermal qualities are better than what we've been using. And, um, and unfortunately, so like our big, big test case is a customer got hit by a grader in an S3 a month or so ago. They flipped the van over. Um, it was upside down. The whole suspension was ripped off. That arrived at the factory Friday, yesterday, day before. And um, we jumped straight in turn the power on, run the fridge, run the thing. And this is a unit that's actually flipped on its side at 100 Ks an hour. Um, turned everything on, um, new suspension underneath and, and should be right, uh, right as rain. So we know so like, uh, from our side that the systems uh, or the units that we're building are stronger than they've ever been. All of that is down to so like, um, the, the walls and the technologies that we're implementing now. Um, they are lighter than what we've used before. Um, they're better insulated. And for us, they're actually going together a lot better. So, so like it's, um, you know, the, the end caps on each side on the cruisers, uh, the walls and the roof, but we're using the same technology in the uh, camper, uh, sorry, the caravan as well. So the walls, the base, the floor, and everything's all exactly the same. And, um, and anybody who's been in the new T3 over here, um, you know, we've run the ability, that's actually 
um, an extra two and a half inches higher um, internally. So uh, anybody that's like six foot six can walk through the whole body of that there without having to duck. So it gives us full flexibility and, um, and anybody that hasn't done a factory tour, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, we're always more than willing to um, see you guys uh, come on in to the factory and everybody gets absolutely blown away by how much we actually do in-house. Um, you know, so we do everything from the chassis in-house. We've got three full-time welders, the painting, the fiberglassing, the composite panels we make in-house, all of the gluing, all of the seats, all of the flooring, all of the canvas is done in-house. We've got six full-time electricians in-house. Um, you know, we're, we're embedded in everything there. Then we've got all the technicians um, and the craftsmen on the assembly line building everything for you, um, all the way up to our QC. So it's been a long process of getting the business back to where we needed to. And hopefully the culmination in that for everybody at the factory is that we've won um, several awards recently and um, ended up taking our best business in where we are, you know? Um, so we're not just taking, so like um, uh, in, in Ballina, we're giving back. Uh, so we're doing apprenticeships, we're doing mature apprenticeships, we're supporting local sports teams and stuff there. So really, so like getting involved in the community, which we haven't been able to before. That's a little bit of uh, an, an update on where the business is as it is um, uh, as we stand. Um, it's been challenging. Really, really challenging, as I'm sure everybody here can appreciate. Um, you know, I took it over in 2019. I uh, got slapped with the fires, slapped with COVID twice, and then in the in the fourth year, we we got the floods twice. Uh, you know, a one in 100 year and a one in 500 year flood in the same month. So it's um, if, if anybody wants a case study of when not to open a business, it's right here. Okay, um, but uh, you know, testament to the brand and actually testament to our dealer network and testament to you folks, the customers out there. Um, the support that we've had has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, so like it's, it's been really, really what's kept the business going is all of that support coming back. Customers, uh, you know, investing a lot of money um, in, in either trading up or trading through, uh, buying for the first time and supporting an Australian built product. Um, so we thank you from the bottom of our hearts and, um, and really, really appreciate all of that support. Uh, now, we know some of that has been selfish because uh, you're protecting your investment, um, but we're happy to go along on that journey with you. So, um, you know, from, from our side, the, the factory is, um, we've got new products coming online. Our American market has been pretty busy as well. So we are Australia's largest exporter by value, um, even though we're some little, you know, God forsaken uh, in, in some back, tr back country town. Um, you know, we got about 50, 60 employees at the moment and um, exporting to the US. So we, we punch well above our weight and, um, and we build a custom uh, van for the US, uh, which is once again, testament to the crew down at the factory um, of, you know, it's like our versatility, our adaptability. And one of the key things that keeps our business going is we're really agile. So for a brand that's sort of like been going as long as we are, we're able to sort of like pivot, we're able to change, we're able to um, uh, you know, fix anything on the very next unit. So if we see a problem come through from either the field or from a production point of view or from a customer specific point of view, we're able to go and fix that straight away and that gets fixed on the next unit going forward. And, um, you know, and in, in how historically we were run, um, or the production line, that wasn't possible. So um, that's a little bit of an update on, on Kimberley themselves. Um, you know, the, uh, I'd said to Shane that, and Maud that I'd sort of like have a quick uh, chat about, um, you know, the biggest change that we see going forward um, in our market um, and, um, and what we're forecasting as a brand. And probably a big part of that is, um, is that so like technology is obviously moving at light speed at the moment. Um, our demographic is, um, uh, you know, everybody denies it, but, but wanting to be in touch more than they've ever been. Um, and, and we all get our fixes from, you know, social media or whatever the case may be. But our whole aim is to still try and get people off grid and off road. Okay, so that's what we are as a core. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you to engage with the environment a lot more. That's where we feel that the memories are made. Um, we're trying to sort of like keep you in a level of luxury, convenience and reliability that you shouldn't find in any other brand. And, um, and that's, where, that's, that's our, our whole mission at the moment. Um, so with that connectivity and with the communication going forward, um, obviously everybody's now aware of, um, 
of uh, SpaceX and um, and the um, Starlink satellite uh, systems. So you know, it's like we're reducing all of our media and comms kits and everything. We used to be sort of like cutting edge on that, um, and that will be the future going forward. We'll have everything Starlink ready going forward. Um, our recommendation is don't put it on the van, put it on the vehicles. Uh, there's systems that we're working with where you get rid of the need to have 240 volts in the vehicles themselves, uh, whereby we're doing so like 12 volt modems that you just plug it straight in. Uh, you can stick the uh, satellites on top of the vehicle. You might not get the ability to use it while it's traveling. Um, at the moment you can, if you've got one of the RV packages, um, but um, I think Starlink's gonna close that down fairly shortly because they can track exactly who's doing what and where. So what they've been working towards is getting the critical ma mass up and then they start introducing prices or packages. So we're seeing that come through at the moment. And um, and so like there's some, there's some great products on the market. Some of those will be offered through Kimberly shortly, um, whereby it does go on the vehicle, not necessarily on the van because you've always got the vehicle um, pretty close to the van and we keep it portable. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the big changes is um, it's all going to be simplified, but all definitely taken over by Starlink. Um, and then all your phones and everything they're introducing, uh, you know, you'll be able to make satellite calls on both Optus and um, everybody's saying it's Optus at the moment. And God knows they need all the help they can get. Um, but Telstra will be going that same way. Uh, from what we hear. Electrification of, of everything. So it's so like, yes, we are getting more into the electrical side of everything. So the new 48 volt systems, the new power systems, I often get asked um, at the factory is, can we charge our EV from the van? Yes, you can, but it's the proverbial. It's like pushing shit uphill with a toothpick, right? So like it's, um, yes, in, in theory you can, but um, you know, if we take, for instance, an F-150 Lightning um, that has a 91 kilowatt battery pack, we're putting 10 kilowatts in the back there. The range is 457 kilometers. How much is my van gonna be able to extend my range? The reality of that is 17 kilometers. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, right? So, so like it's um, all, all what you read in the media at the moment about, so like, yes, vans are gonna be made where they can extend your range and stuff. It's not gonna happen. And then sort of, um, you know, and then what we see speaking to some of the people in industry is they go, well, so like, you know, we'll just get a bigger battery pack with extended range. And, um, and yes, you can, right? So like it's, a, of course you can get a much bigger battery pack. So once again, in the F-150 Lightning, you can get a 133 kilowatt battery pack, which then takes that to 600 Ks. If you're power hungry and, um, and you felt that you had to pull in to charge your batteries at a campsite, is um, typically you'll be able to go into an EV station, charge it up, and currently with the prices at about 25 cents a kilowatt, um, you'll be in for about a buck 75. Um, at your local things. So we'll have adapters, you just, uh, you know, back up the caravan to an EV station. It'll take you about so like 20 minutes and you'll go from 20% to 90% in 20 minutes, but it'll cost you buck 50. So, um, so that's all exciting for our side. Um, the electrification, getting away from gas, um, works really, really well. Uh, we've had some awesome feedback this year as we started getting our e-versions out there. I think that's going to grow and grow into next year. And then, you know, it's like us, us just trying to work out um, what we're doing, keep the build simple, um, but still give everybody the luxury that they want is, um, is, is where we're trying to get to.